Okay, next we want to talk about light in the world ocean and what happens to light as it penetrates into the world ocean. If we recall from our earlier lecture or earlier, earlier segment, the color of an object depends upon what it absorbs or reflects. In talking about the color of the world ocean, we want to take a look at things that absorb light and remove those colors and alternatively which colors are left over after those particular things in the water or even the water itself absorb those colors. So anything that interacts with the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum is going to change both the intensity of light as it penetrates into the water column and also the color of light. Okay, so things like seawater itself, anything dissolved in that seawater, remember DOM, suspended particles in that seawater, so the living particles which would be phytoplankton, the dead particles which would be pieces of phytoplankton or any kind of organic debris, and inorganic things like silts and clays that might interfere with light as it penetrates the water column. These wavelengths of light may be absorbed, in which case they're removed from the water column as the light is penetrating the, the upper ocean, or they may simply be scattered. And scattering, the best way to think of scattering, is just something that changes the direction of light. If you have a lampshade on your light, it's scattering light in different directions, so it illuminates the room. If you take that lampshade off, you'll notice that the room isn't lit up as well as with the lampshade on it. Same with those fixtures in the top of fluorescent lights. Those are called scatterers. They're, they're actually those um, plexiglass plates act to scatter light and illuminate a room because it makes the direction of light go in many different ways. So scattering is changing the direction of light. Absorption is actually removing that light, that visible light, that electromagnetic energy from the water column. If we look at all the different things in the ocean that might interact with light as it penetrates the ocean, we come up with something like we have here in 7, figure 726. Light penetrating the ocean is going to interact, of course, with water, and water acts to both absorb and scatter light. That light is also going to interact with phytoplankton, and phytoplankton being photosynthetic, containing the pigment chlorophyll, which is the primary light absorbing pigment of all plants, all photosynthetic organisms, they are going to absorb light. CDOM, or dissolved organic matter, is also going to absorb light. Remember the tea colored water that I showed you in chapter 5, coming out of that uh, little creek there on Vancouver Island where I visited a couple years ago. Detritus, just the sort of bits and pieces of stuff that result from any organic processes. It might be uh, fecal pellets or fish poop or anything that's left over as a result of biological activity may also absorb light as it's penetrating the water column. Bacteria and inorganic particles generally act to uh, scatter light, although some kinds of bacteria, in particular the photosynthetic bacteria, which we actually classify as phytoplankton, cyanobacteria, will absorb light. But heterotrophic bacteria, the kind of bacteria that we uh, think of as decomposing type bacteria, not photosynthetic bacteria, are basically going to act to scatter light and move it in different directions. It's these processes, absorption and scattering, that give the ocean its color, but they're also these processes, the scattering and absorption properties of the ocean, allow us to sort of investigate or see what's happening in the, wa in the water in ways that we never could before. By studying the optical properties of water, by studying how the color of the ocean changes in response to things like phytoplankton, we can then use satellites and those satellites will actually give us visual reference or visual cues to things that are going on in the water. So these 
optical properties and the study of the optics of oceanography called optical oceanography has really opened up again a new window and a new vista not just on the physical properties of the water but also on the biological properties of the water as well and many ships now are also um, deployed with instruments on the CTDs that measure the intensity of sunlight or the color of light as it penetrates the water column. Those instruments are called radiometers because they measure electromagnetic radiation with a meter.